Hey, you're back listening to the Get Out of Debt Guy podcast. I'm the old Get Out of Debt Guy, Steve Rode. And with me, as always, is the new Get Out of Debt Guy, Damon Day. Guess what I'm going to ask you, Damon? Say hello. Hello. <laughs> always so enthusiastic. But uh, that's not, that's, you're not asking me. You're telling me. Okay. Damon, would you like to say hello? Sure. Hello. <laughs> you should have just left it as sure. <laughs> Today we're talking about uh sex. Well, you know, kind of. We're talking about sexually transmitted debt and financial infidelity. It's kind of a two-part thing. And let me break down what these terms mean if you have not heard them before. Well, financial infidelity is when one spouse hides financial activities, you know, like spending or debt or bank accounts or accounts from their partner. And, you know, it, it generally it comes out later in a big surprise reveal and it's never fun. The other one, sexually transmitted debt. This is when, you know, one partner unknowingly takes on debt of the other partner as a result of, you know, joint accounts or cards or co-signing loans or entering a marriage without knowing you know all of the debt the other partner has. It's, it's actually more common than you would you would think. Uh, I mean, I've talked to people over the years that were getting married. This is the thing: people will swap bodily fluid, but they just won't tell each other about their debt. <laughs> like, what's more shameful? Well, it depends on who you are, I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, apparently, for at least the people that I have dealt with over the years. Um, Talking about the debt is is more shameful. I remember this one guy who told me, he goes, Steve, I'm in trouble. I've been dating this girl for seven years, and she's given me an ultimatum. And she said, we either get married or I'm leaving. And he said, the reason I won't ask her to marry me is because of my credit report. So, you know, the polite me was like, you know, look, we can work through this or, you know, things that we can do. And inside my head, I'm going like, Dude, <laughs> come on. Yeah, well, I mean, at, at that point, you just have to be honest with her and say, hey, look, and, and I think if I remember the story right, it wasn't even really that much debt or it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Um, and it's something that you guys can work through together. You know, no point hiding it. And the, the thing is, I always find that it's it's usually something where the other person says, well, I'm going to get it. I'll be able to fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Yeah. It'll get fixed first. So I don't have to you know, come forward and, and disclose, you know, what happened. And the problem is most of the time in the process of trying to fix it, it just tends to get worse and worse and worse or bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. In, in this particular case, uh, the, uh, girlfriend ended up leaving him because he hid it from her or yeah, he, he would not, he, he couldn't tell her about his credit report. And so she just, she gave him the ultimatum and he wouldn't do anything about it. And she left. And so the thing he was worried about her leaving him because of his credit report happened anyway, because he wouldn't tell her about what was going on and given her a chance to say, okay, well, let's work through it together. You had a client once uh, that had kind of a, a reverse situation. I've had many of these too. This situation where it was where uh, the purse story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah you you want to tell us that one well yeah that one was it was a bit reversed because they were both you know there was no like uh hiding or anything going on right. but um it was a client that hired me and we were going through the finances and um it was clear that you know his uh lifestyle far exceeded his his income mm -hmm. and uh you know it, and, and there's a lot that goes into this, but you know, one of the components was that, um, he wanted to keep his wife in the lifestyle that she was accustomed to being in and his income was going, Nope. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, that, that was kind of how he ended up in that situation. That was a big driver of it was just the, the, the overspending. So, you know, we came down to where he was in a situation where we were going to, uh, negotiate, the cars, he just could not afford them anymore. So we were going to negotiate with the creditors and he was not in a situation where bankruptcy made sense. And when he sent me over a couple of his statements to, you know, review the, uh, his cards and who he owed what to and, and all that stuff, 
I noticed there was recently, like within the last 30 days, um, some very large charges on a Macy's. I think it was a Macy's. Could have been a Nordstrom's. I can't remember. This is you know, eight, 10 years ago. Um, credit card. And he wanted me to, you know, negotiate that card for him. And I, I said, well, I, okay, what's this charge? You know, it's like, I, 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 I can't go to the creditor and claim hardship and, you know, get you a deal when you've got this. What is that charge for? It was like ten thousand dollars. Yeah, and it was recent. Yeah, yeah, it was well, it was made after you know because we he'd been a client for a few months by this point where we were trying to yeah. figure everything out and looking at different options. And so this happened while he was a client of mine, and he goes, "Oh, that was a, a purse my wife bought." And I just I was kind of taken aback a little bit. I was just like, "Come again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like what?" <laughs> like, like this is like a ten thousand dollar purchase, you know? Like, what hardships are we going to be claiming? And then it's like you right. can't just like then go try to that you know buy a ten thousand dollar purse and then turn around and be like, yeah, I can't afford this payment anymore. It's like wait, wait, wait. So he, I said, she bought a purse, and he goes, well, it was a bag too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, well, in that case, <laughs> I was like, all right, we need to take this. And at this point, I'd never, um, I had not met with his wife, uh, she refused to, you know, participate, which I always encourage my clients, you know, have your spouses participate, you know, in the calls, we all need to be on the same page. And, uh, um, so I'd never spoken with her or anything like that. And and I told him, I said, Hey, look, we got to do one of two things here. Either, you know, you got to return this bag and purse or whatever it was, or you got to continue to make payments on this card. I can't, I'm not doing anything with that card. There's no way. And, and, and he was like kind of shocked by that. He's like, Oh, really? You, you can't negotiate it. I'm like, it's not that I can't. It's I won't. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's no, I'm not doing that. Uh, uh-uh. we're not getting free Gucci purses or whatever the, whatever the heck it was, you know? So the end result of all of that was the very next phone. I said, look, you're going to have to, I'll be happy to talk to your wife about it. Um, if you want me to, but you're going to need to have a conversation with her. You, we got to make some hard choices here. Yeah. And the end result was the next call we did. He said, well, hey, look, I really appreciate what you've done, but we've decided we're going to go a different direction. <laughs> okay. Best of luck. I never heard from him again, so I don't know right. how it turned out. But <laughs> hey, <laughs> sorry. Well, I, ha- I have uh, my favorite uh, female story, my favorite male story. So you pick. Which one do you want to hear first? Let's go female. Okay. My favorite female sexually transmitted debt story was a couple who was happy in love. They were just like the best partnership you'd ever seen. And the wife had told her husband, you know, we need to get things better organized so we can move forward financially. And I think what we should do is just consolidate all of our debt on your credit cards and then you know we'll get all the perks and bonuses Ooh, and we'll pay it off this is going yeah so the day i have not they, heard the story before <laughs> the day after the, they consolidated all their debt she left <laughs> and i knew that was coming didn't even see it coming <laughs> robbed by a sweet old lady <laughs> okay oh i have a second sexually transmitted debt story that involves a woman so i was working with a couple and we're going over the bills. And I said, I know you each have your own cell phone account, but I don't remember her name, but I'll call her Betty. But Betty, why do you have two? Ooh. And she was like hemming and hawing and dodging and everything else. And finally, she just got fed up. and She said, because it's my lesbian lover's phone. Great. All right. <sighs> uh, and my favorite. So did you balance that budget, Steve? <laughs> I, honest to God, I think that was the last conversation I ever had with him. Funny how that uh, works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all your fault. You blew up the relationship. Yeah, I don't think your problem is money. Um, <laughs> Honey. And my, my favorite guy story is guy goes to the, the car dealership. He's told his girlfriend, not even married, his girlfriend, how much he wants a new Mustang. I love the car, everything else. I'm going to work overtime. You know, baby, I love you. And they go in and his credit is crap. So the only way they will give him the loan for the car is if she 
co-signs and pledges her paid-off car as collateral. She said he this drove off a long time ago. Yeah, he he drove off the lot, and that was the last she saw of him. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you you know, people do strange things when it comes to money. Now, how Who says there's common- no good men left out there? That yeah. guy's out there. <laughs> I'm sure he traded in on the next disaster. He's a lot older now, but he's out there. So how often, how prevalent is this thing about financial infidelity and sexually transmitted debt? Well, 43% of adults in a relationship admit to committing financial infidelity, not telling their partner. Four in 10 adults regularly keep financial secrets from their partner, like hiding debt. Now, my God, Damon, over the years, you've told me so many stories about, I think it's primarily women, actually, uh, who no, my I, husband I, doesn't no. know or my wife doesn't know, right? No, I can't, I, I'd, it, say, I'd say it happens with men a, a lot, too, especially because you know, of the shame that's involved. And I, uh-huh. I got it. And, and a lot of it all stems from nobody ever seems to, you know, nobody really ever does it on purpose. Like, it's not like that wasn't their intent to start out right? most of the time. But it was just something that, oh, I had to do this or I had to do this or I wanted to, you know, save them the, the, the hardship of, you know, you know, the burden of this. So I'm trying to fix it right myself. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of snowballs and snowballs because as, as debt does, the larger it gets, the bigger cash burden it has. And it gets to a point where it's very dip- difficult to keep concealed. Mm-hmm. And so, but yeah, it, it, it's actually, uh, very, com- I saw a meme actually. Last night on Facebook, <laughs> it was funny. It was a guy like at his computer, like, like pulling out his hair and the whole caption was like, you know, me, you know, frustrated, you know, working overtime, trying to pay all the bills. And then my wife sneaking Amazon boxes into the house. And then it has a lady like holding a big Amazon box and like in a kind of a funny walkway, like sneaking in behind him. But the, it was just, you have to see it obviously, but it was actually pretty funny. I'm sure that goes on a lot where, you know, the husband comes home from work or the wife comes home. And, uh, you know, the, the non-working spouse or the working spouse comes home and pulls in and sees boxes on the front door. Oh, yeah. Goes oh, into yeah. a rage, right? Like, ah! <laughs> More boxes! Well, Bezos who, is one of the richest men in the damn world, thanks to me. Yeah. <laughs> couples who fight about money are 30% more likely to divorce. And 16% of those who committed financial infidelity said it led not only to increase debt, but also um, could lead to like debt settlement or bankruptcy or, or something. They did had to yeah. do something about it. Well, here, here's my ad- advice, and this is obviously self-serving. If, if there's an issue, you have something going on, whether well, it's you know, $5,000 on a credit card, 20, I've, I've had clients where it's like, yeah, I've got this $100,000 and and it always comes like, I don't want to burden my spouse with this. I want to try to fix it. It's, you know, I mm-hmm. did it. It's my problem. And I've had some where, you know, gambling addiction and stuff like that, or just, you know, shopping, you know, uh, things going on. Um, and even somewhere it's just like, I've been trying to keep everything afloat and yeah. I'm trying to shield my spouse from the stress mm-hmm. of that, you know? So it, it, it and, and so oftentimes these things were done, I think with good intentions, it just got out of control. And, and, you know, when I have clients that are in situations where like, I, you know, I feel like I need to come clean, but this is going to crush them when they find this out. And I don't know what that's going to mean. Obviously, every situation is different. But my biggest recommendation is, well, you need to tell them, number one, because they're going to find out. They're, right. you know, they're just they're going to find out. But you want to put a plan in place yeah. to fix it first. Yeah. Like yeah. if you get a plan. So when you present it with them. Yeah, you've got to present it to them. Right. You're not saying, here's this $50,000 problem. Now what? Now you're saying, you know, you want to be able to say, okay, look, here's what happened. Here's why it happened. Here's the steps I've taken to fix this. Right. And, and this is what I'm going to be doing. Whether, you know, whether that's, you know, negotiating the debt, whether that's a bankruptcy, whether that's a, hey, you're getting a second job. You found our penny stupid channel and you really like the idea of door dashing and, and Instacarting and that kind of stuff to pay it off, whatever it is, when you do kind of drop that bomb on them, drop it on them with, but here's the plan to fix it. Because even things like bankruptcy, in many cases, 
you know, there's ways to do things that won't affect your significant other right. you know, from a credit standpoint and things like that. So you can kind of fall on the sword, so to speak, you know, as you're showing them what's going on, but here's the plan. Like we can have, you know, one spouse file bankruptcy in many cases, and the other one doesn't have to, where you can like, Hey, this is debt was all in my name. And I'm just, yeah, I'm going to take the hit. I'm going to do the bankruptcy, but that's not going to affect my spouse's income. It's not going to exp- affect my spouse's credit or anything like that. Or mm. even with settlement, there's, there's often ways to solve the problem by, and, and, and minimizing the effect on the, the spouse was not aware of the issue. Well, I always uh, gave people, I agree completely with what you just said. I always gave people the advice, we need to have a full financial disclosure and it's going to get frosty afterwards. You know, just prepare yourself that this person, your spouse is going to get caught off guard and things are going to (laughs) chill, you know, so don't, don't be alarmed when they're pissed, but it was always a multi-stage approach after we come clean, right? We need to have open communications with our, with our spouse. We need to create new financial rules like mutual accountability, uh, looking at the accounts together, you know, having an open book, their relationship may need some counseling or therapy, you know, depending on what the underlying issues were. And more importantly, on both sides, it will, if the other spouse is like done, I'm not doing anything. Well, then it might be over. But if the other spouse says, you know, uh, more people have appreciated coming forward with a plan and being surprised about it and then having worked through it. And I have found that in those situations, Patience and forgiveness takes a little bit of time, but it it does happen, and it does take a little bit more time for a gradual restoration of trust. Now, both parties are not necessarily – one party is not necessarily more to blame than the other in these situations because uh, I think you and I can both think of lots of examples of people where the husband or the wife was just totally checked out of their finances. Yeah. Right. I, I don't I don't do anything with it. That's that a person's job. I'm, you know, totally out of it. And then when there's a surprise, it's not necessarily the other person's fault because, you know, you chose not to actively pay attention. Yeah, especially when things are tight and the, the spouse that was in, in charge of the finances was just juggling things, trying to keep everything afloat. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes that involves doing some things that, you know, were maybe don't work out the way they'd hoped, right? I mean, everybody's an optimist when it comes, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to get this really bad loan, but then I'll be able to consolidate this, this, and this. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to get this raise at work, or this is going to happen. And I'm going to be able to, you know, dig my way out of this and it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, it just makes it worse. So my overall advice, and I want to hear your summary of this, is that if you run into one of these situations and you're surprised, and you find out about the debt, um, like talking to somebody like Damon, Damon Day, D-A-M-O-N-D-A-Y.com, and working through, you know, you don't have to tell your spouse first. Talk to Damon, work through a plan. He can guide you on, you know, here's the how well, I think that you should present it, and here's what we're going to accomplish, and I'm here for you, and I'm going to be holding your hand. And that is a much better way. And overall, I have seen much better results by doing it that way. Bracing yourself, it might be a little chilly. We're going to work our way through this, blah, 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 uh, than just springing the surprise or driving away with the car or, you know, leaving the next day. <laughs> those those yeah. things never repair themselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially if they drive away and never come back. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of yeah. hard to repair that. Yeah, or transfer the debt and leave. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've, I've actually had, you know, both situations where more often it's the, uh, the, the spouse or the partner that has, um, the debt issue and they're trying to, and, you know, they stumbled across our website or something like that or our podcast and they're, they're trying to figure out what to do because instinctively they're like, I'm afraid to tell my spouse. And instinctively they know, like, if I am going to maybe have to tell them or her, I want to have a plan 
or sometimes you're thinking, well, maybe I can, you know, get this figured out without having to tell them. But I can tell you from lots of experience that no matter what we end up doing, there's going to be ways that it'll be a phone call, random phone call from a creditor or something that they happen to pick up or, or whatever it is. And then that's not the way you want them to find out where your spouse is yelling at somebody on the other phone because they're like, you got the wrong number. I don't know why right. you call me. I don't know this money. And <laughs> that's, that's not the way you want them to find out. But I also have clients over the years that were the affected spouse that, you know, that, or that found out about it. And, and they're, they're, okay, let's, let's figure this out. Like, what are we going to do? And start getting online, doing the research and all this kind of stuff. And then they end up calling me. And, you know, we're in a lot of situations where like, hey, we don't know what we're going to do. We don't know if this is going to end in divorce or not, but, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, so you don't, you never know how somebody's going to react. But my advice is if you have a situation, uh, you know, regardless of the reasons that you're in the situation, we just got to look at the situation and then decide how we're going to move forward. But my advice is figure out a strategy and a plan first. And then you are going to have to come clean um, because it will come out. Like I said, it will come out. And it's you just got to start thinking like a politician. It's best that you control that narrative and right, have a strategy right. have for a plan. it. Yeah, rather than the, the American people just finding out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I have, uh, while you were talking, I had three stories pop into my head. One was, uh, I don't know if you've seen this before, uh, but parents who end up taking out credit cards in their kid's name oh you know that uh, yeah yeah i was going to uh, kind of bring that up with the the even dicier one which is the spouse has the debt problem but it's in the other spouse's name then it gets yeah. dicey <laughs> that's a dicey one yeah i mean i've i've seen this where the kids you know come of age and they're finally so, able to, daisy <laughs> yeah oops my bad um they're finally able to like a apply for their own credit and they look at their credit report and they've got all these cards. The parents took them out. My, my favorite parent card story was a guy who was, uh, the kid was here studying, going to college. Uh, he was a foreign student and his father came to visit him here in the United States and didn't tell his son applied for, it was an American express in the kid's name. And then ran it up and left <laughs> just left the country but here is what i think is probably the diciest situation i ever saw was a woman came to me with problem debt it turned out that her father-in-law had opened a loan using her name and he would not pay back the loan and she would not report him to the police. So she just kept paying on it? She kept paying on it. She she said that she didn't want to include her husband, you know, the guy's son, because she didn't want to blow up the family relationship. Uh, and so, too late. I, I, I know. Um, you know, they're all tragic. Yeah. That no, one actually had a, a really weird ending. So what ended up happening is... Dateline tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> what, what ended up happening was she defaulted on the debt. They went and they sued her. Yeah. But they never could find the loan documents. Right? So they couldn't validate the debt. <laughs> oh, did she get an attorney and challenge it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, in that case, she actually had a valid defense. Right. Yeah, I never borrowed did. the money. And in, in those yeah. cases, the you know the consumer's like, well, yeah, okay, yeah, I borrowed the money. Yeah, I did. But well, I, did originally the business. lender was saying, you know, you need to file a police report. This needs to be, you know, we need to pursue him with criminal charges for identity theft and everything else. She just lucked out that it turned out that it all fell apart because they lost the loan documents and could never validate the debt was actually real. Yeah, because in a sense, she handicapped the lender. She really left the lender no choice but to sue her because uh-huh. she wouldn't take the steps. They they can't go after this guy. Right. Because just because she's saying so-and-so took out the loan, it wasn't me. Well, without a, a police report, they can't. That's just, you know, nothing yeah. they can do about it. You know, right. You're the one liable until you can defend yourself. So, yeah, well, I'm glad it worked out for her. But And then that didn't blow up the family relationship when the the son's wife was sued? Uh, she didn't tell her husband. He didn't even know she got sued? Nope. Wow. And, of course, the okay. father-in-law wasn't coming forward. So, 
It was a terrible situation with a freaky ending. Well, there you go. Sometimes, what do you say? Fallen shit come out smelling like a rose. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was her. All right. Well, Damon, unless you have anything else to add, I think we've covered this today. Uh, no, it's just, uh, just that I would like to reiterate because it's, it's so important that, you know, when you're in a situation like that, you can't imagine how good it feels to finally get a plan together and be able to come clean and, and, and whatever the consequences are going to be the consequences. But, um, you know, trying to keep it a secret and trying to fix it on your own by keeping it a secret, 99% of the time does not work. They will find out and they will find out in a, in a bad way, which like, like Steve's first story, um, will probably end up resulting in the thing that you're most afraid of by trying to keep it hidden. Like, you know, the guy with his credit report, like didn't want to marry his, um, girlfriend right. because he was afraid she'd leave him because of his credit report. And instead she left him because he, Wouldn't tell her. <laughs> he never committed because he was afraid she'd leave him because <laughs> right. of his credit report. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew all those years ago, but you do you boo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so come up with a plan. And like I said, if if you need to fall, there are options out there where, you know, if you're in a situation where you ran up that debt, there's there's things in many cases that we can do that would protect your spouse. And But there's also situations that your spouse is going to be implicated in. And the sooner we get ahead of it, the the better. Right. Right. I mean, especially if you're in a community property state, there could be some implications there, depending on what your income is. You might You might not even be in a position where you could file a bankruptcy yourself just because together you and your spouse make too much money to file a, a chapter seven. So, you know, but we need to figure all that stuff out first. So, you know, okay, these options are plausible. These options are not, you know, here's some strategies that we can work through, figure that out and then have that conversation. It's going to be unpleasant, but it will be more pleasant than them finding out by a creditor, you know, calling one day, because if you're got, if you have creditors calling your phone, it's just a matter of time. If you're ignoring them, where they're going to find other numbers related to you. It's real easy to do these days. And those people are going to be getting phone calls. And one of them will be your spouse. All right, Damon, there, you know, there's no sense wasting a perfectly good mistake. Let's learn from it and move forward. You need help. Contact Damon, D-A-M-O-N-D-A-Y.com. Until next time, Damon, see ya. Peace.